All right, we're talking about relatives that we're going to see at Christmas time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what, you, what was I'm that? I'm most excited. I'm excited Let's to see on. my relatives. We're all excited to see our relatives. <laughs> we're just talking about stuff that relatives would send around in emails and texts. And would say, stop sending that. Right. You know, you get all the conspiracy theories and you go, there's no conspiracy. There's no conspiracy. Well, Hillary's health is a, there's no conspiracy. Stop it. You're an idiot. Say that to all the people that are emailing you this stuff. And then she faints. And you're like, oh. <laughs> in, a tr in a pretty dramatic way. In a pretty dramatic way. So then you're like, well, okay, she just fainted. You're just a member of the media. You're just, all right. Anyway, looking forward to Christmas. It's beginning to look a lot. Anyway, a new poll from USA Today. Maybe we'll talk about this over, over our Christmas dinner. A new poll from USA Today in Suffolk University finds that uh, more Americans believe uh, President's, uh, President Obama's best legacy uh, is also... His worst, 24% say the Affordable Care Act is Barack Obama's greatest achievement. 22% say it was the economic recovery from the Great Recession. And 9% say his moral leadership. But atop the list of Obama's biggest failures as president are Obamacare at 27%. And also 15% say his handling of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. And 15% say race relations. About a third of those surveyed said Obama ultimately will be seen as a good president. 18% say he'll be a great one. But one in four say he'll be rated only as fair, and another one in four say he will be seen as a failed president. Uh, Mike Barnacle, I've got to say, if in this era, of being president for eight years, if only one in four people say you're a failure, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's a, a complex age we live in. Uh, his uh, legacy is going to be complex. He's the first African-American president. That's going to be right up there at the top. I, I think as history measures his presidency down the road, 20, 30 years, I think his presidency will be viewed as uh, not only transcendent, but quite successful. Because I, I, the, the, the core of his presidency, I think, was at the beginning of his presidency, literally, he and his team saving along along with elements of the Bush administration. Well, yeah, I mean, Bush, Hank Paulson, Bush, Bush was pushing Hank Paulson, Ben well, and, and Bush was pushing TARP, and yeah, no, saving, they worked together, saving the country from a cataclysmic depression. Yeah, uh, what do you think, Rick? I think we would have maybe suffered a depression, but I think we would have far recovered from it. Along, so I, I think pouring trillions of dollars into the economy. You know, it didn't make a lot of sense to me. I mean, it's just, I don't know what's going on. And look at the well, anger no, that it, no. look at the anger that it ultimately fueled, because people didn't see their bailout on a personal level, right. but they saw these big bankers getting a bailout. I think that Republicans really underestimated how much lingering anger there was both over parties. the both, both parties, parties, both parties still. And you can't blame. I mean, mm -hmm. look, look, but the recovery was very, very slow. Mm -hmm. Right? There's a lot of optimism. I was with some asset managers last night, and they are. And, one one I talked to, he didn't vote for Donald Trump, but he is supremely optimistic about it, 2017. It, it, yeah. Ro Robert Costa, uh, in your, you know, behind the scenes, chattering conversations with uh, Democrats and Republicans on the Hill, what is, what is the initial, the glimmerings of a review of the Obama presidency that you hear? Segmented, Mike, between January 2009 in January 2011, when the president had the Democratic majorities and was able to enact much of his agenda, he got a lot done. But since January 2011, President Obama has struggled to cut the kind of grand bargains, the kind of bipartisan deals that many presidents in the past have been able to do during divided government. But the also debate that you have to attach is almost uh, coupled with the Obama years is what the story of the Republican Party was and how it has moved from being the party of George W. Bush at the start of the Obama presidency to being the party of Donald Trump. And so as much as the president struggled at times to make things happen with the Congress, the Republican Party, too, was going through fits. Well, you know, there are a lot of weaknesses in, in that legacy, I believe. I think you can look at the fact that the Democratic Party under Barack Obama lost more seats all across the board than any party since Herbert Hoover's party in 1932 when FDR was swept into power. I mean, you'd have to go back to 28 for a party that's had as bad of an eight year run under any president. Um, and leadership style problems uh, Bob Costa's right after you know the last six years of his presidency he just didn't strike any significant deals with Capitol Hill he could never figure out how to 
deal with the Republican majority. And people can blame that on the Republican majority, but when you're president, you got to figure out how to do deals. Bill Clinton figured that out, and he didn't. Uh, Syria, obviously a disaster, but I, I focus on that where the 9% focus. I think it's moral leadership. Think about it. If you combined Bill Clinton's effectiveness with Barack Obama's moral leadership, and what type of a man he was, and the 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 doing the very things that we're saying Donald Trump should do. Mount Rushmore uh, about about not uh, about about not gaining personally from the White House, uh, being a great father, being a great husband, being a great man inside of an extraordinary di extraordinarily difficult situation. I think I think that is a great success. And again, if you had combined his moral leadership with, um, despite the fact I disagree with him on 95% of what he's done, with Bill Clinton's effectiveness, you, that that would be well, now, now, quite a combination. Now you're on to it, because I think the elements of his presidency that will stand out as historians look back at his presidency is his moral leadership, yeah. is his exemplary personal behavior in his family, uh, and the remembrances of uh, singing Amazing Grace in right. Charleston, South Carolina. I mean, his leadership ability, his leadership skills. His well, it's sp kind of amazing when you think about it, the big scandals of the Obama years were actually Hillary Clinton's own scandals. Yeah. The scandals that we're going to take away from the Obama presidency are really more about what she did right. and what that, what, and that turned into what the election was a referendum on. Yeah. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.